If you're trying to work out the best way to launch a web or mobile app, there's an incredible amount of jargon to get your head around. And if the very thought of that gives you a headache, then this video might act as an aspirin of sorts. The purpose of this video is to give you a really good grounding of how web and mobile applications work and what you need to be mindful of when launching yours. Let's start by just dipping our toes in. We're gonna go really broad. The first concept is this idea of languages. All applications are built in a combination of languages. Languages are simply the way we tell a system what to do. Just like how you might tell your friend to pick up bread and milk in English, in HTML we'd say ally bread, ally milk, which just means list bread and milk on the page. There is an enormous number of coding languages, and to make it a little bit trickier, new ones are introduced every year. All languages have their various strengths and weaknesses and lend themselves well in various applications. We tend to separate languages down to two key buckets, front-end languages and back-end languages. Front-end languages can be thought of as those that primarily drive what you see on the screen, the user interface or the UI, while back-end languages is kind of like the plumbing. While you won't directly see the output of the back-end languages, the hardworking code at the back is heavily impacting your experience at the front. Think of a flash car. The front-end languages would control the paint, the color, and some basic functions like the window going up and down, while the back-end language would be the engine. All right, take a quick breath before we roll up our sleeves and go a little deeper. Inhale, exhale. We're now gonna look at these various languages and we're gonna start right at the front and work our way back. The first and a real fundamental language that you'll see everywhere and you've probably heard of is HTML or Hypertext Markup Language. This controls what you see on the screen and in what order it's presented. The language itself is only capable of prescribing some reasonably basic formatting like size or color. A website made in HTML would have all the key content but it just wouldn't look that good. It would kind of be like a child's scrapbook. It would have all the things that you want to see but it wouldn't be presented in a very engaging way. And that's why we have our next key language, cascading style sheets, or CSS. These sheets normally sit in the same folder as your HTML, and they tell the HTML how to look and how to behave. For example, when you hover over this button, go from blue to green. Or they might say, make this image 400 pixels tall and 300 pixels wide. Our last major front-end language, and the most powerful of the three is JavaScript. JavaScript brings your web page to life by allowing for real-time interaction. You may have noticed when you're on Facebook and you click like on someone's post, the whole web page doesn't completely reload. Rather, that like appears instantly. And this is the magical work of JavaScript. It allows things to change in real time and for you to interact seamlessly with a website. Now we're gonna jump into the back end. And like I said, there are hundreds of languages available, but the tech world is dominated by a handful of key ones. The first is PHP, and it really is one of the go-to languages, especially for web applications. Facebook and WordPress, which we'll touch on later, are both built in PHP. It's extremely widely used, which means there's a lot of developers that know what they're doing. For small web applications, it's arguably the best, and it's bloody quick. Our next major backend language is Java. And strangely, it has absolutely no relation to JavaScript. Java is a multi-purpose backend language with one really powerful advantage, that it works great across multiple operating systems. Another big language is Python. Python's actually been around for 20 years, but in recent years, it's becoming extremely popular because it's reasonably easy to code in, and it lends itself well to large data analytics which is the way the world is going. All right, we're almost done, but there's one more topic which is really important and I'd be amiss to leave it out. Building things from scratch is really hard, but luckily the tech world has a key solution for this, being content management systems or CMS tools, the most famous of which is WordPress. It's reported that 70% of the web is backboned in WordPress. And while I find this hard to believe, there's no doubt that it does play a major role in the online ecosystem. Content management systems are basically a template that allow you to build your own website. The heavy lifting's been done. 
So all you need to do is come in, adjust a bit of copy, add some images that work for your brand, and voila, you've got yourself a functioning website. Now you're up to speed with the basics of the digital world. I hope you found that useful. And if you want to discuss this or anything else about your business, reach out to Double Yoke. We'd love to chat.